After several months of research and speculation and learning, I guess, we decided to replace our batteries with lithium. YouTube has uh, many videos on how to when it comes to lithium batteries. There's a lot of trailers, fifth wheelers and the smaller motorhomes where people are doing themselves. They're replacing their AGM or lead, lead acid batteries with the lithium. But when it comes to large motorhomes, there is nothing on the market that I could learn from. So in a way I'm, I'm learning and I'll post what I learned. Perhaps uh, others can learn from it as well. This video is not how to, this is more like how I'm doing it and what I think I need and the lesson learned. So if you are considering replacing batteries on your RV or large motorhome, subscribe and follow us we'll be recording as we learn in a process so what do we have we have a large motorhome 45 foot country coach which has currently four large agm batteries at about 265 amps giving me theoretically over a thousand amper hours of usable energy however we have made some errors along the way and my batteries have hit single voltage eight and a half, nine volt, and they are no longer, shall we say, useful. So why lithium? Well, there are many advantages of lithium. Um, it's new technology, number one. Its energy is a lot more usable. It's sort of like, think of a lithium batteries as your iPhone, where you can charge it up to 100%, use it, drain it down to a 10% or, or zero, you plug it back in and it's back, back on. You cannot do that with, with the lead acid batteries. So they last longer. Uh, projected lifespan of lithium, large lithium batteries is seven to 10 years versus two, three, five, maybe seven years or less with the, with the lead batteries. Most of them don't last. Mine is only two and a half years old. Uh, they charge much faster. They'll take as much amperage as you can throw at them, which is another, another, another plus. Uh, they're lighter. They generally weigh about third of what the lead acid batteries. The, the comparable lead acid AGM battery of mine is about 170 pounds. The lithium that I'm looking to replace them with are about 60 pounds. So about a third of, of a lead acid battery weight. Um, also in the long run, they're, they're maintenance free as well. They can be mounted in different positions. They don't have to be placed in any particular um, elevation and whatnot they can be on, mounted on the side or whatever whatever fits your space so that is the benefit so they're also also maintenance free and ultimately in the long run they are cheaper per kilowatt hour based on longevity and, and the other and the other factors so um, considering those things uh, we decided to to go with lithium uh, despite the negatives so what are the negatives? The, the big one, of course, is the cost. Uh, lithium batteries generally cost about 50% or more than, than the lead acid batteries. So my lead AGMs cost about $800 a piece. So instead of spending $3,500 to replace the AGMs and have still old technology, I decided to spend maybe twice that and go with the new technology. The second negative of lithium batteries is they cannot be charged, well, at present, with below below freezing, below 32 degrees. So that's something to keep in mind. There are some new new batteries, new technologies out there where they have a heaters. There's a little heaters inside the batteries, but that option is just too expensive for, for us to go with right now. So we will go with the regular lithiums with no low temperature sensor. They might have a, usually will have high temperature sensors, but they don't have a low temperature sensor. But that can be mitigated by either wrapping the battery in the thermal blankets or installing um, a thermostat, kind of giving the reading, or and installing a, a cutoff switch where you know if you're going to be below freezing, you just turn off your batteries so your batteries don't get charged below freezing. They can be used below freezing. You can drain them if you are dry camping or whatever, 
down to like 20 below zero, but you do Celsius, but they don't want you to be charging them. So you have to be careful with your alternator or if you're plugging to the shore that the lithiums are not being charged if it's below freeze. So, but um, we have additional negatives on our side that we consider. I could be wrong, could be something else. So please let me know in the, below. But additional negative that's generally not listed is if you have an older system, like in our case we do, our motorhome is 15 years old. So my alternator, even though it's a very big one, it's 320 amp alternator, so it should be able to handle that. It will need a DC to DC charger to prevent alternator from burning up because the lithium batteries need a higher voltage. They generally need 14.2 to 14.6 volt charge and most alternator that's kind of borderline they may or they may not be able to do that so you need additional as to my research dc to dc charger to save the alternator and you might also look at your inverter charger because mine is probably original 15 years old which is not set up for lithium batteries which means it may and may not be able to convert and make the useful transition between the floating uh, floats uh, rate of 12 13.8 volt battery versus 12.8 so so there's something for us to learn and explore but those, so those are the so the three big negatives are the temperature the low temperature charging which can do um, the additional cost that if you have an older system that your alternator and your inverter may not be able to handle and obviously the the cost the cost is it is what it is so what are we planning to do? We're planning to install four 300 ampere hour lithium batteries, giving us a total of 1200 ampere hours. 1200 ampere hour, it actually translates into real 1200 a maximum. You might not want to do that, just like charging your iPhone. You might want to go from 100 down to zero and just go back and forth all the time. But you can go down to five, 10% plug in your phone or plug in your batteries, charge them up and you're to go. So that is a huge advantage for us that by chance or by accident, if we should ever drop the voltage down into the single digit, lithium fully recovers when lead acids don't. Lead acid in a comparison, at, as new batteries are only useful 50% of it. So that thousand ampere hour capacity that we have on paper is really only useful about 50% of that, meaning 500. So your voltage from 12.8, you can go down to 12.2 on the lead acid batteries and you do not go below 12.2 because that creates the damage to the battery. So that is the one of the major reasons for us to be, to be doing this because we don't wanna be finding ourselves buying a new batteries in a couple of years again and we just actually wanna get more, more use out of it. That longevity is, was very appealing. The being being much lighter, uh, being easier to charge, they're faster charging. They'll they'll take any amperage you you throw at them. Uh, they're maintenance free. There's no gases. There's no. You don't have to be adding fluids and whatnot. You can mount them any any which way you want, and um, they lose less power. They they uh, lose energy if you are in storage. Now we're not big on uh, thinking about storing this thing, but those are the some of the main reasons. That, that we are switching to lithium. So if you wanna learn more how this turns out, click on subscribe, join our channel and follow us. Maybe you'll, you'll learn something or maybe you also can share your experience and tell us what we are doing wrong, what we should be looking into. So the batteries have been ordered. Uh, they should be arriving in a few days. I already know that I also am gonna need uh, DC to DC charger to make this work because lithiums require higher voltage and I don't want to stress my alternator so I'm going to be installing couple DC to DC charger to smooth that transition from alternator to battery and kind of save the batteries and the alternator in the process and also because we don't have a low temperature cutoff on our batteries because those were too expensive we're just going to be installing a, a simple um, cutoff switch where if I know the temperature is going to be below freezing I just turn the switch off to prevent batteries from being charged so so those are the some of the main things that we are looking at 
uh, batteries should be here in a few days and I'll record the video the condition what kind of batteries we'll be going with and uh, hopefully you can learn something from us so you can let us know below if you know some more stuff than we do but it's just it's a new technology I'm not a electrical background kind of person but so I have someone help me out with this and and hope for the best so what are we what are we getting we are getting four 300 amp lithium batteries uh, now obviously they're made in China and they're all made in China lithium technology is China based so if you have a problem with that then throw away your iPhone because guess what it's also made in China so besides that we are ordering two DC to DC charger we're gonna have a, a cutoff switch uh, maybe temperature temperature sensor and probably down the road at some point we will need uh, a battery monitor something like a Vitron or any other uh, that gives us uh, perhaps remotely with the Bluetooth whatnot a Wi-Fi that the condition of the battery and cells and, and whatnot but that's that's that comes at the later stage so the more important thing is to set up this properly so the inverter does its job the alternator doesn't get burned and the lithium batteries get properly charged so follow us click on subscribe we'll we'll be recording videos of the process and like I said YouTube is a great platform but I just could not find anything of this size of this magnitude that is available so I'm kind of learned as I go so this is not how to this is how what I'm doing and we'll see how it turns out thanks for watching